Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I'm taking a look at batteries. Not my usual kind of thing. In this case, these are pale blue rechargeable batteries. And the company makes some pretty big, bold claims about these. They're rechargeable lithium ion batteries that it states can be recharged up to a thousand times, which is kind of impressive, thereby saving a thousand single use batteries from going to landfill. Now, they're pretty decent. I like them a fair amount. But those numbers do need careful examination if you're going to work out if the pale blue batteries are for you. So let's get into it. And first of all, I've actually got to be able to get into the casing. And this is an interesting one because this is how it comes as retail packaging. I have opened these already, but this is how it should look to you. And you've got this cardboard outer sleeve. Now that's easy enough to deal with. But then it has this inner box. Now it's a storage box. That's a really good idea. It's really smart but it's held in place with two really tight little screws. You'll need like a jeweler's screwdriver to actually get into the batteries in the first place. And this takes some time and some effort. If you're thinking, cool, I'm just gonna pop my new batteries out and use them in like five seconds flat. It's not gonna happen folks, at least not the first time. You don't have to keep the screws around. The case will work just fine without them. And I suppose it does make them less stealable and maybe might stop your kid from grabbing them and shoving them up your nose. That's Kind of your problem as a parent, I guess. Pale Blue sells the Pale Blue batteries in this AA format or AAA. That's what they've sent me. They've also got 9 volt, your typical rectangular style, and C cell batteries for sale here in Australia. And ordinarily, of course, I wouldn't say that much about the design of batteries because batteries are built to a standard. You want a AA battery to be exactly the right shape and size to fit in your AA socket for your gadget, of course. The big interesting thing about these particular rechargeable batteries is this. When you buy most rechargeable batteries, you've also got to buy a charger with them, or sometimes they come with the charger. A little bank that they then sit in, it plugs in or it goes in via USB, and that's how you power them back up. That's not what PowerBlue has done here. The actual charging circuitry is built into each of the batteries with a socket, a USB-C socket specifically, used to supply power. And you get this interesting four-headed USB cable in the box to charge them. Now on the AA batteries, that's a horizontal slice near the positive terminal. The smaller size of the AAAs means that it's a vertical slice instead. USB-C is super handy. You can't get them plugged the wrong way in. And for charging, yes, you can use their four-way charge ahead. You do have to supply your own plug though. This is where it gets kind of interesting. They're designed to charge reasonably slowly, which is safer, of course. But what that does mean is your standard phone charger, probably totally fine. I've had no problems with that. However, some higher capacity USB-C power delivery chargers, yeah, those I've found the Power Blues are a little fussy about. Some of them have worked, some of them have not. Basically, your mileage may vary. And because I like to take things too far in a slightly ridiculous way, I did also try a few power banks with the Power Blue batteries. Those, to a man, refused to work. I mean, I suppose there I am charging batteries with batteries, and maybe the voltage is a little bit too inconsistent for the Power Blue batteries. But it's worth keeping in mind if you're thinking, well, take a big power bank with me, and then I take these, I can charge other gadgets off the power bank, and then my battery gadgets can go from those. That's probably not going to work for you based on my own testing. What about actual battery life? Well, look, this is always a super variable matter because it does depend on the kind of gadget that you're throwing them into. Throw them into your TV remote control, for example, and they'll last ages because the TV remote control really doesn't draw that much power when it's in use. Throw them into a lamp or throw them into a portable games console, for example, you'll get a lot less battery life. I knew I kept all those retro consoles around for a reason. I should pause here also and note that it's generally not advised to use rechargeable batteries in things like smoke detectors, although the advice here is super mixed. Some of it relates to much older rechargeable battery chemistry. Basically, it's well worth checking the specifics of your smoke alarm before deciding if a rechargeable battery is a good pick. Most people say that it isn't. I'm not going to claim to have enough electrical experience to say do or don't, but it's generally not advised, and I'll leave it at that. Across a bevy of gadgets that I've tested with these, they performed fairly well. And to give this some context, for example, I threw it into a modded Game Boy Advance with an IPS LCD screen. Now that thing chews up battery power because that 
higher capacity screen, of course, wants more power than the classic terribly dim Game Boy Advance screen. And it did really well. I mean, I managed a four hour gaming session where essentially I stopped, not because the batteries ran out, but because my hands were hurting too much. I'd had enough. Your own mileage may vary, and it does vary by gadget, but certainly they seem to live up to their power promise. But speaking of promises, there's that promise of 1,000 recharge cycles and 1,000 batteries or more that you don't have to buy, saving you money, and that the environment doesn't have to deal with, which is a plus. Now, on the main, rechargeables are good for this. Rechargeables are what you should be using to try and minimise battery wastage. I'll pause here to point out that in Australia, it is actually fairly trivial for most people to recycle their used batteries, and you absolutely should do that. I will throw a link in the description below if you don't know where you can recycle batteries near you. However, the issue there, of course, is that there's still energy and chemistry and packaging and manufacturing and shipping and storing and so on that goes into producing those batteries and using rechargeables avoids all of that. So it is a net environmental gain and can be a net economic gain as long as the sums add up. And this is where you have to do your sums. So the AA Pale Blue batteries that they sent me have a capacity of 1,700 milliamp hours, while the AAAs, being a bit smaller, top out at 600 milliamp hours each. And the standard battery capacity of a AA or AAA, well, it varies. Some cheaper, older things, if you're buying your budget no-name brands, yeah, you'll get about that power level, maybe even less, because, of course, they might have been sitting on a shelf for a while and battery chemistry degrades over time, irrespective of what you're using, basically. But... For higher capacity batteries, you could see quite a bit more than those stated figures. And then you're not talking a one-to-one. -one. You're not replacing one much higher capacity single-use battery with the Pale Blue. You may be replacing two. And of course, over time as well, as the Pale Blue battery's chemistry degrades, which it will do, lithium-ion just does that. There's That's just physics. There's no getting around it. Well, I suppose it's chemistry as well. But still, my point is that over time, the battery capacity of those Power Blue batteries is going to dip, and that one-to-one -one is going to get even shakier. I'm not sure, and obviously I haven't had them long enough to test that that thousand claim is true. Maybe check back with me in a few years. But I'm not sure that those numbers add up. And that's also for another reason. It's to do with the recharging. So I quite like the way it recharges. I mean, when you plug it in, it lights up like a little Christmas tree. And I have tested, so if you do lose the four-headed cable, yes, you can use other cables, though, as I noted before, you do need to be careful about which charger you're using. But taking that plug in and out and 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 in and out... <laughs> Over that thousand plug insertions and removals, that's going to cause some wear and tear. And look, I've seen this on USB sockets over the years so many times. The USB socket itself starts to break down. And if the USB socket starts to break down on your pale blue battery, you're out of luck. You can't charge it at all. So it's got to be robust enough for that. Now, they do provide a limited lifetime warranty. There are some exclusions there where they talk about normal wear and tear. So I'd be very curious to see whether or not in a few years, if you presented something with a broken USB socket, whether or not they'd actually replace it. But it's worth keeping in mind. So should you buy the Pale Blue batteries? Well, it depends. They are premium priced here in Australia. A four pack of AA's or AAA's will run you $49.95. A two-pack of 9-volt or C-cells will run you the same price, $49.95, which is premium in that rechargeable space. You do have other options out there in rechargeables that are worth considering. It's worth looking at their battery chemistry and their claimed power. But overall, these are a decent product, and I do think they do highlight how we do need to think about how many single-use batteries we're using and how we can reduce that number. This could be part of that story. Anyway, that's my take on the Pale Blue batteries. What do you think? Are you a Pale Blue user? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to hammer that like button and hammer that subscribe button.